Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today's video will be a tips and tricks video specifically for the dredge. For those that don't know me, I'm a P100 dredge main that streams five days a week over on Twitch. I hope you all learn something new and enjoy the video. Start placing your remnants on exit gates. If you reach endgame against one survivor as the dredge, placing your remnant on top of an exit gate will prevent the survivor from interacting with that gate without having to break the remnant. It should be noted though that it does matter which gate you block with your remnant. Placing your remnant on a gate that has lockers nearby is ideal as you will be able to immediately teleport back to your remnant as soon as it's broken. This acts as a built-in no way out as you can walk to the other exit gate and watch that one as your remnant covers the other gate. Just be aware that the dredge does move much slower when it's holding its remnant out so this may not work on larger maps where the gates are much farther apart from each other. This strategy works incredibly well on maps like Midwitch and Dead Dog, but not so well on maps like Gideon's and Decimated Borgo. As a survivor, you can see the exact moment a dredge begins to teleport. One tip for survivors is you can see the exact moment when a dredge begins to teleport. As soon as the dredge begins to teleport, the doors on the affected locker will shutter and slightly open. This is a very hard to spot detail and is generally unknown across the player base. When working on a generator next to a locker which has lost its lock, it's essential you look out for this detail as it can and will save you from taking a hit or a down. When spotting this as a survivor, you should have time to react unless the dredge has the boat key add-on which increases its teleport speed. You can see when survivors open lockers while charging your teleport. When the dredge is either in the process of teleporting or is holding its remnant, any lockers that are being opened by survivors on the map are visible to you. This little detail can give you so much information on the positions of survivors. Always pay attention to lockers while teleporting. If you spot a locker door open, immediately teleport to that locker to either grab them or close the distance onto them. Use your remnant as much as you possibly can. The remnant can be an incredibly strong anti-loop ability if used correctly. You should be using your remnant at every single chance you get, whether that's trying to hit a survivor behind an object, at a standard shorter loop, longer god loops, or just trying to zone survivors. Without this ability, you are essentially just an M1 killer that can teleport. The remnant is the dredge's greatest tool at ending chases quickly or getting hits that are not normally possible for M1 killers. Start leaving your remnants behind at hooks or generators. Oftentimes, if there are two survivors left, the match can turn into a game of hide and seek. If you have a survivor that is hooked, leave your remnant concealed nearby and walk away. Oftentimes, this will bait out the other survivor to come rescue their teammate. As soon as this happens, teleport back to your remnant and chase the unhooker. This practice can also work for generators. Leaving remnants behind at a generator while using perks like Dragon's Grip or Surveillance will get you many hits on sneaky survivors. Use your remnant to bait out altruistic survivors. If you are in a situation where you have a down survivor, but there is another survivor either waiting for the flashlight or pallet save, place your remnant behind cover near them and walk back to the down survivor. Oftentimes, this will bait the survivor to run close behind you as they don't want to miss their save. As soon as a survivor passes your remnant, teleport back to it and you should have a free hit. Many times, survivors will stay just out of reach of the killer in these situations. It places a lot of pressure on the killer and wastes their time. You can see exactly when you have your nightfall teleport teleport speed available to you. Many players will teleport too early when nightfall starts. There's about a three second period where any nightfall benefits do not apply. When the survivor's portraits in the bottom left have an orange background, that's when the dredge is able to teleport at full speed. This is definitely a hidden detail which will save you many headaches when you are attempting to teleport during nightfall but not at the speed you are expecting. You can use elevation to trick survivors with the remnant. The remnant will hold its position as long as you keep charging your power, meaning no matter where the remnant is, you will teleport back to it. This means you can place remnants above survivors or even in midair to catch them off guard. A few examples of this is the pig shoot on the game. As you are chasing a survivor down the chute, place a remnant while falling and move to the unsafe side of the pallet. If the survivor chooses to stay at that loop, force them to drop the pallet and then return to your remnant. You will drop down right on top of them. Another example of this is the main building on the mother's dwelling. More often than not, a survivor will fall off to the right side of this generator and try to stay at the pallet below. Place your remnant on one side and drop down the other. As they drop the pallet, return to your remnant and drop down. This will result in a hit. These are just a few examples of how you can use elevation to your advantage. You will pick up on more spots like these as you spend more time on the dredge. Be more patient while using remnants in chase. Many dredge players will teleport to their remnants way too early in chase. This is either because they're worried about the survivor mind gaming them or of potentially missing their attack while teleporting. If a survivor sees that you have a remnant placed down, this will put a lot of pressure on them. Survivors will often make mistakes while in chase against the dredge, whether that's them zoning themselves unintentionally, double vaulting, or losing distance while trying to mind game you. You can often capitalize on their mistakes simply just by waiting. 
place remnants down and bottlenecks in longer loops. The dredge could turn many safe loops in this game into 50-50s. For example, if you are chasing a survivor at the killer shack, start leaving remnants behind on the doorways or on the window. Very few dredge players utilize their remnants properly during chases. This technique will catch almost everyone off guard. Even if the survivor suspects you have a remnant placed down in a choke point, this will either force them away from the loop itself or force them into a 50-50 mind game. Just remember to not play the same mind game twice on the same survivor. Repositioning your remnant in chase at Killer Shack, for example, will absolutely throw survivors off. Don't commit to teleporting during chase while not in nightfall. One of the biggest mistakes you can make while playing dredge is teleporting during chase while not in nightfall. Very rarely is it advantageous to do so. More times than not, this will result in the survivor juking back and gaining more distance on you. Even while using the boat key, which increases your daytime teleport speed by 25%, will not be fast enough to allow you to correct your mistake. There is also the risk of the locker you teleporting to being locked. If you're not using the Hattie's calendar add-on, this will add even more distance between you and the survivor. Many survivors will try to bait you into teleporting, either by running straight at lockers or pretending to not be paying attention. These survivors will juke back last second when they see you teleport. As a dredge, sometimes you can counter their mind game by charging your teleport, but not actually teleporting. Some survivors may double back early as they believe you are teleporting. Just be careful with this strategy as it will reduce your movement speed slightly. Place your remnants in areas that cut off nearby loops to survivors. When chasing a survivor, try to place your remnant in an area that will prevent the survivor from chaining a nearby loop. Oftentimes, newer dredge players will place their remnant as soon as they can while chasing a survivor. If that survivor is paying attention, they will try to leave that loop for a different one. This can result in a survivor leaving a weaker loop for a killer shack or a god loop. Make sure you're paying attention to your surroundings as a dredge. Placing remnants in spots that denies these loops will help you a ton. Teleport back to your remnant during nightfall to find hidden survivors. While the dredge is in nightfall, any locker you teleport to or whenever you return to your remnant will reveal any survivor within 16 meters of you with killer instinct. This is an amazing feature of the dredge's ability which allows you to find anyone that may be hiding during nightfall. This effect also works on survivors who are inside of lockers. Use this as much as you can during nightfall as your recharge speed for your ability is incredibly quick. The add-on followers cowl will give you this ability during daytime, meaning you will have this effect for the entire match. You can avoid the loud locker bang when teleporting to a locker. When the dredge completes its teleport to a locker, there's a loud audible slam which notifies survivors that you are in that locker. If you time it correctly, you are able to exit the locker before that noise plays. Exiting the locker as soon as you possibly can will catch many survivors off guard. This won't take long to get used to and will be second nature once you have the muscle memory down. Use your remnant to instantly return to a better position while scouting. Oftentimes, you may be in a situation where you're not sure where the survivors are, but you are defending an important generator or hook. If you leave your remnant behind, you will be able to leave said area and try to gain information on any remaining survivors. If you feel like you need to return to the area you are defending or are unsuccessful in finding anyone, you can instantly return to your remnant. If you made it this far into the video, please drop a like and tell me what you thought down in the comments. As a reminder, I am heavily involved over on Twitch. I stream five days a week where you can watch a top tier dredge player in action. Thank you all for watching the video and I will see you all in the next one.